Okay! Dun, 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 dun. Welcome back to the Iron Prince News 2. Where to start things off? It's been a while. Um, hmm. There is Pokemon, but recent development has put me off immensely from that. In fact, the recent trailer after months on end has not really impressed me all that much. I'm to the point I've undecided even if I want a game. Linen or no linen, Sogaleo or not. Let's just say I am no rush to pre-order anytime soon. So that's enough about Pokemon. They introduced something new that made these other two things completely entirely obsolete and overshadows the actual styles. Okay. Today will be exclusively about Dragon Ball. And uh, initially I was not very keen or that interested in getting Dragon Ball Z fights. Uh, surprise, surprise, eh? I'm more into the Xenoverse or Tenkaichi type of base formatted game, the 3D as opposed to 2D. But uh, ultimately they've won me over. Because Super Saiyan Blue, in fact, will be in the game. Regina and Kakarot. Not in the Resurrection F outfits, unless it's some alternate costume. No, in the new one. The old original ones, Regina and the Blue, my personal favorite out of all his uh, outfits, save for perhaps Namek uh, Saga, with just the shoulder pads. Or when he faced against Frieza, he had to change his armor. Uh, yeah, so they will be in the game, and apparently the game shall release February next year. So I may just go and pre-order that. So apparently there's like first, what's it called? First day bonus or something you can play with uh, blue right off the bat and if there are tournaments down the line ah oh, yes you can bet you I'm gonna train my ass off so uh, yes I even uh, applied to see if I am one of the lucky chosen to play the bet of it so yes now, we'll go to the manga. The manga finally finished the black arc, right? And it ended just as uh, everyone expected. Anime, Zeno comes. Oh! Trunks were gone. Only difference is, Zamasu wasn't copied bloody all these clones. Vegeta even blast him. He blasted him to freaking bits with the Gamma Burst Flash exclusive only to the manga at this stage. And Zamasu Black, because they're technically the same bit, they merged from a cellular level. It created these clones and copies, and uh, Vegeta and Takua were determined to make their last step. You know, they said, Paul Bomber and Mai and the Kais leave, get out of here. You know? And Kakarot just stumbled across the button just like an anime. And Zeno came and now yes, there are two Zenos still. And there's just some, some suspicions even on that, because one Zeno acts different to the other. It has to correct it himself. Can I even call it for him? Um yeah, putting up the wrong hand or saying the wrong things. Uh, that's 
should have a part to play. See, everything's foreshadowed, you know? The moment Kakarot was given that button, everyone's like, okay, this has to play a part at some point. And yeah, at the very end, because that Zamasu was immortal, despite in the anime, Trunks, Rage Trunks, was given the power to put an end to the physical Zamasu. He sliced him in half. But the Zamasu became omnipotent. Took over the whole universe. Yeah. So the fairy goes, yes, Zeno wiped him out, immortality or not. Oh, the very essence of the mass, nowhere to go. Where, where would it go? Inside the Zeno himself, because they did not get the Zeno and return him back, like, with them to the past. No. First they escaped as Zeno was destroying the whole, um, Universe as a whole, right? Whole timeline vanished. No more ceased to exist. Hell, heaven, earth, whatever. And then they went back. Kakarot and Trunks. Kakarot exclusively told to Trunks specifically, let's go back. I'm curious about something. And that's the whole reason we have the Zeno in our timeline. To begin with, because Kakarot's like, oh, let's go back. Oh, I knew it, he's there. Let's get him, let's bring him back. <laughs> and if you want to look at it at one perspective, it was all to get the Zeno off Kakarot's back because Zeno was like, hey, I want you to come play with me sometime. I'm bored, you know. What did Kakarot do with the other Zeno? He brought him to our timeline, Zeno. And he's like, here, yeah, he's your friend, you know, that I promised you. You know, go have fun together. La -de -la -de -la -de -la. And that got him off the back. And here's this for another fact. Initially, manga and maybe anime as well, Trunks and Mai, future Trunks and Mai, that is, they had nowhere to go. Their plan was to actually stay in our present timeline. You know, just stay at Capsule Corp. And that would have been fine. That would have been alright because, uh, you know, our Trunks is still a kid. And, yeah, our mind is still kids. It's fine. But, uh, no, Gohan, apparently he came, he was training the, um, the, the gravity room, right, from time to time. He expresses to Trunks, oh, I want to see, like, I don't know if he says, oh, I want to see Bulma, future Bulma one day, and see, like, the peace all uh, safe and secure, you know, the future all safe and secure and all that. And this convinced Trunks to, uh, no, we, we shouldn't stay here, let's just go to, like, another timeline, which the other timeline is going to have a Trunks and a Mai. Nevertheless, yes, you have a future Bulma. She'll be alive there because they'll go, apparently they'll go to a timeline where even before uh, Babidi and Deborah attacked. Now Trunks has the power, like, the Trunks that the timeline was destroyed now has the power to stop them with ease. And uh, Wiss is going to pay, I think, like, pay the future Beerus. Future Wiss? Oh, oh, future. I visit. Anyway, they're going to wipe out the Tsumasu there even before he gets immortality and whatever. They're going to put an end. They're going to cut, cut a root at its source. Right? So initially they're gone. So thank you, Gohan, very much. Of course, it would have not tied in the end of Z because there is no future Trunks, there is no future Mai that are there with our cats. <sighs> Whatever. I want to see a backstory. That's all I want to see. Like, how the heck the future Trunks and mine meet up because the rest of the Pillow of Gang in the future, they were killed at some point. Whether it be by the androids or otherwise. 
All I know is there was this uh, short manga kind of special, right? The short flashback. This explains why the pillar of gang are kids in Battle of Gods. And why my is like, um, what the, in mine or whatever, 41, yes, 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 so in mine, whatever, like you can say she's like 41 or whatever, right? But physically, she is a kid now, uh, trunks, let's say a couple years past, right, from Boo Saga. I put him like 10, 10 plus, right? Heading towards the teen years. But by no means do they look like teenagers yet. Um, yes, Pillow Gang, before Piccolo was actually killed by the androids, what actually happened? The Pillow Gang got their hands on the Dragon Balls and they wished themselves to be young again. And they weren't specific. The thing is, when you make wishes with Dragon Balls or uh, wishes in general, you have to be specific on your wish because anything could go wrong or be not as you <laughs> intended it to be. Um, so Shen one made him tiny, tiny freaking toddlers. Yeah, apparently everyone is getting killed, right? Boma and there was trunks in you know one of the baby carrying uh, backpack things, and Gohan was like, you know, yelling, you know, feeling the pain, the loss. And here are the pit of gang crawling like away. And my and, uh, and baby trunks, they have this moment, they look at each other, right? So, yes, even uh, in Battle of God, prior to that, in our timeline, they wished themselves as kids during the Android Saga. Yeah. It was during the three years, right? the androids came and first attacked during that period and uh, the, the peel of gang in Dragon Ball Z to my knowledge that I can recall were not shown at all the last time they appeared was in Dragon Ball when Kakron and Chi Chi were like meant to you know they were gonna get married and they were had to get a task they had to that to say the father from the bloody castle was on fire and put out the fire and all that and the people of gang got in their way per se and uh, yes. <laughs> they were shown in freaking GT and they were old as fuck in the very first episode and they were shown a couple of times here and there, right? Besides that GT at this stage could not be possibly canon. It can be reworked, um, revived, you know, and whatnot. We'll see. But yeah, a few things have to be undone. There's a theory going around. I want to shout out to um, Empire Arcadia. Recently, I've been watching a few videos. He is a major Vegeta fan. Much like yours truly. And he's made some interesting points, so go and check those videos out. There's one called Keeping Score, the Goku and Vegeta Rivalry. Puts, like, what's it called? Puts all Vegeta and Kakarot fans or tarts in their place of where the two stand, where they've stood the whole entire series. So, there's that. Now, what else I want to talk about? Let's see how long has this video go, been going for? Alright, almost 15 minutes. Chapter 27 of the manga has dropped. And surprisingly, unlike the freaking anime, we actually have. Vegeta versus Beerus rematch. And it's amazing how this came about. Because it's like. Oh, everyone wants to see Kakarot, you know, have a rematch. But 
if he had a rematch, then all the Kakron Tats would be crying. Oh, what the hell? He's still not struggling, period. This is ridiculous and all that. And Toriyama stated he has no intention anytime soon for Vegeta, neither Vegeta or Kakarot to surpass Beerus. No. And this manga proves just that. So initially, we start things off. Vegeta and Whis, they're sparring on Beerus' planet, right? So Vegeta's like, uh, uh, trying to hit Whis, right? He has hit Whis before. And Whis just like blocked, mostly, he just blocks, right? And uh, Whis, like, he goes, Your movements have actually improved, right? You are getting faster, right? You are getting a hand, a grip on the stuff that I'm teaching you. Now, you have to excuse me if I go back and forth, because this is in the point of the point of contention. Empire Cadia points out that while the manga dropped and was not translated, and even after that, Z-Tubers, right? Renowned source of uh, what people, you know, they look up to for information, you know, to keep up to date. The influences of our Z-Tuber community. Unrelent Gaming, right, goes opposite. He says opposite to what we'd say. Oh, you're too slow, still too slow, Vegeta. You know, you're not getting this at all. Bullshit! And geekdom is just as worse. Because I've seen it for myself, you can go see it. Geekdom 101, Chapter 27, Dragon Ball Super Manga Review. And panels have been left out, not everything has been shown. And the ones they have not been shown, right? You'd think, oh, they're not like important, right? You know, I don't have to talk about this. I don't have to show that and whatever. Bullshit! They are crucial to the plots that are coming up. The foreshadowing. Ah, I digress. Wish disappears. Vegeta is there. Silent. No moving. The water, the pond, Vegeta looks to his left. And then trying to feel the air, the movement, you know, the breeze. No distractions. Looks to his right. And Whis appears! And initially, Whis is going for like a top move, right? And Wish is going for a chop move, right? And you've seen Resurrection F. Uh, both in the movie and the series. And in the movie, he actually hits Virginia in the back, or I think it was actually the neck. Knocks him out into commission, right, for a bit. And then Kakarot continued to like to spar off, right? But Vegeta like joined back in. And I think that's when he actually grabbed him later. He grabbed Whis. And Kakarot didn't even touch him at all. So, it's like this. And Whis is initially going for a chop. Suppose. But Vegeta is like. I got you! So he punches in the opposite direction, right? Of which was intended. Which intended to go in front of Vegeta all along. He tried to trick Vegeta. But Vegeta read his movements. And, uh, uh, Ireland Gaming, you damn idiot. He goes, Whis just blocks it and he's like, Nah, you're still too slow, you're not getting it. And, uh... 
What happens, right? We blocked it, but he goes, correct, correct. Vegeta read his movement. That's what Whis was going for all along. And uh, yeah, Whis praises him. Vegeta's like, I don't need your compliments. And it continues spark, right? <clears throat> all this is going on. While this is going on, Beerus is like, uh, ah, what's going on? Why is he like all serious and all that, you know? He's never been that serious or whatever before. And Oracle Fish, right? That spoke about the Super Saiyan God to begin with. So, the Oracle Fish that spoke about the Super Saiyan God to begin with. Beerus is like, ah, his library is just a waste of my time. I'm gonna go take a nap. You know, it's like, uh, yo, 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 prediction, your prophecy of, uh, yeah, at least Saiyans being my rivals, uh, that was so exaggerated and wrong at best. Something along those lines. Oracle Fish goes, they will. They will. Not he will. Not the other will. They will. So, I'm a massive Vegeta fan, so I have to also uh, accept this for what it is. But I'm fine with it. You Kakarot Tarts, maybe not so much. Both Vegeta and Kakarot are meant or destined to rival Beerus according to the Oracle Fish. And Beerus is like, what? Those two? Oracle Fish is, yep. My rivals? Yep. Vegeta sparring with Wiz. <coughs> and Beerus is like, hey, Vegeta! Vegeta stops. And Wiz is just like blocked, right? Blocked. One beats punches. Vegeta's like, turn the around, like, what's going on? Beerus is like, ah, oh, I see you have indeed, you know, improved, you know, somewhat. So how about you and me go head to head? She is like, what? And we were, and, and Wiz is like, hmm, how unusual. You should take him up on this opportunity, Vegeta. And uh, Vegeta's like, dot, dot, dot. But he goes, very well, I accept. Shift and say, Vegeta and Beerus stand off. Now mind you, when Vegeta was training and sparring with Whis, he was in his base form. He wasn't even Super Saiyan Blue when he read Whis' movements. The most effective way to train is remain in your base form. Now onto the fight or the spy itself. Vegeta transformed to Super Saiyan Blue, as expected. And Beerus is like, ah, there's nothing special about that, it's just Super Saiyan Blue. And Vegeta launches at Beerus. And BAM! He punches Beerus. But Beerus, it blocks. This uh, Hanwell and Jamie, what he said, Beerus blocks it with no effort at all. It was nothing. Beerus, what he goes, I said that moment of impact was indeed magnificent at best. And Toyotaro, 
He's a master like drawer animator, right? He's got these lines to indicate that was a forceful impact. And then Bill's like, ah, but it's still not enough to match me. Super Saiyan Blue is nothing more than just a mere power from Super Saiyan God. And Beerus tosses Vegeta, right? So Vegeta initially sparring back. The Unreal Gaming or some other bloody idiots, they go, He smacks Vegeta! Talk about taking it out of context. So, instead, Vegeta regained his footing, right? And again, tries to launch a Beerus. Beerus is just either blocking, right? Blocking or dodging, right? So Vegeta even tries to kick, 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 kick. Kick here, kick there. But Beerus is just dodging, swaying, swaying everywhere. Vegeta goes. Does, it doesn't say, but it's implied it is. Final flash! Beerus is like, what the heck is this thing? Get this thing out of here! But that was a distraction. Vegeta pops behind Beerus and goes for a punch! But Beerus moves too fast. And then Vegeta's like, Ugh. And then Beerus is like twirling and spinning every time Vegeta's trying to land, make impact. To the point, Beerus smacks Vegeta with his very tail, and that sends Vegeta flying into the pond! Into the river! And... Bubble, 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 bubble. Which is like... Well, that was surprisingly fast. Beerus was like... Ha! Ah, so it's already over, isn't it? It's already over, is it? Vegeta emerges. Still a Super Saiyan Blue. Or aspiring all around him. And Beerus is like, What's this? You want to go again? Vegeta hovels into the air, closes his eyes, focuses, like he's meditating. And he's like, um, He's not even young. And he actually pulls off what Kakarot did in the black, the fused Zamasu arc. When he went toe to toe with him for a bit. Vegeta pulls and sucks in all of the Super Saiyan Blue aura within himself. So it's just a blue hair, no aura at all. And Whis is taken aback. Vegeta, when did you learn to do that? You've actually... You've actually done what Goku did against, you know, a few Zamasu. And Vegeta's like, Anything the Kakarot can do, I can do as well. And Beerus is surprised. Oh! Um, what do you say? Now it's getting interesting. Look like, how exciting. Shall we continue then? And Beerus this time is the one to launch at Vegeta. Vegeta blocks him. Blocks. So Beerus is going on a full offensive and Vegeta is blocking him. And Beerus is getting frustrated and annoyed by this. And uh, yeah, Beerus punch. Vegeta bluffed and he's like, what the? Why are you doing that? How are you bluffing? Anyway, Beerus takes up to the sky and Vegeta chases after him instead. 
So this is like a full powered, perfected, super saiyan blue. And he's punching, punching, punching. Ugh, trying to attack. Bears and kick. And uh, Oracle Fish asks, uh, is he even serious yet? Like, Beerus, is he serious yet? And we're just like, no, he's still playing. But uh, it might be uh, best if he does get serious soon because we do know what happens. Like, like we don't want him to get hit, and he, you know, he, he has a tendency of losing uh, his temper. And the uh, whole fish is, uh, yeah, it's uh, he's unpredictable uh, when he loses his temper. Anyway, Vegeta full on the offensive. Beerus is blocking, blocking, blocking. But it gets to a point that Vegeta sees an opening. A freaking clean hit right onto Beerus' cheek. Ugh. So, ah, uh, such shock and it was like shaking that much of an impact. But, Beerus is still standing just where he is. And Vegeta's like, before initially he was like, You're mine! Got you! Beerus like, yeah, I take it easy on you, and you can't get carried away. He grabs Vegeta's hand, and he's like squeezing it, and Jesus, uh, uh, what? Duh, don't get cocky. Beerus is pissed. And Oracle Fish knows what's coming. Um, Whis, can you create a barrier now? And Whis is like, oh dear, I, uh, where did I leave my stuff? Oh. Or scepter, scepter. Next thing you know, boom! Beerus has Vegeta pinned to the ground. Out of Super Saiyan Blue, just that one forceful impact that Krina is all around. It's like the largest. Nothing that Beerus has done, like everything that Beerus has done before this, even against God Kakarot, pales in comparison to the amount of effort this must have taken to one shot Vegeta onto the ground. And Vegeta is like, oh, damn it! And Beerus is like, ah, well, I do give you a point, you have like immensely improved, right? Because before it was like, uh, Beerus, before the standoff was like, it's been a while, it's been a few years, hasn't it, since we last, you know, you know, stood off. And Beerus like, I'm not the same as before. Indeed, he isn't. And it's like, I have to give you a point. You have improved immensely in a short amount of time. But you're still no match for me. It will take you a million years until you can even reach my level. But I will say this. You have the potential to be a candidate for God of Destruction in another universe, just not this one. Beerus turns around and he goes, Whis, fix this mess up. And Beerus is going to go take a nap. And Vegeta is down uh, on the ground. Damn it, still no match for him. And then Whis goes to Vegeta. Oh, you know, just don't let the uh, sting of defeat, you know, like, 
get you back. You did very well. You, know, you did a good job. You know, not many could pull the feet that you did. And then it's like, ah, still, no match. And Bruce is like, what do you expect? He's a god of destruction of this universe. Not even Kakarot would have stood a chance. So Which is not saying this, this is what I'm saying. Kakarot would have still been quashed. Perhaps even worse because he has not been trained at all. He's been reduced to farming because Chi Chi's orders, you know, she's, he's scared of Chi Chi. And he gets into a scuffle with these uh, bandits. One shoots him and he's got like a freaking a bruise on his arm. Jeez, I'm getting rusty. I need to get back to training. And he tried to contact Whis. So that's why Whis doesn't have the scepter. He doesn't know. And yeah, Vegeta gets himself up. And then Whis is like, you still have not mastered you know, what I'm trying to teach you. As a matter of fact, like even Beerus has not mastered you know, this yet. You have to learn how to make your body, each of your body parts move, you know, co-independently. You still think too much, right? And Vegeta's like, so if I learn this technique, that means I can take on anyone. And he's just like, correct. So, technique of instinct, pure instinct alone, no thought power at all, is what Vegeta needs to master. And perhaps he will just do just that. Epic for shame. And he's like, because Whis goes before, mm, I, see, I, I assume like Goku is not, you know, he's not in front of him anymore, no? He's not ahead of him. Jira is like, <clears throat> Kakar I am indeed equals. But knowing this, I still have a long way. We still have a long way to go. Knowing this is all I need. It's like, I will be the one to reach the top first this time. I'm sick of following after him. So yeah, foreshadowing. This time, for the first time in a long time, Vegeta will be ahead of Kakarot, and Kakarot will be the one to have to catch up! Because even Super Saiyan Blue, it is unknown who achieved it first chronologically. We saw it on screen, Kakarot transformed first because he fought Golden Freezer, and then Vegeta transformed. But we don't know who achieved it first, Vegeta or Kakarot or both at once. Because they were in, Whis in the series, they were in Whis staff, that was like God Chi surrounding them. And Kakarot's like, I can't move. Vegeta's like, hmm, okay. I need to keep the key inside of me. And he did that. And then he was like, hey, I can move now. This is it. But yeah, yeah. We just don't know. I just assumed they achieved it at the same time. Um, so Vegeta's like, Whis, sorry, but I need, I need you to take me back to Earth. Um, it's like, hmm, what's wrong? Is something the matter? Vegeta's like, hmm. it's, about, it's about time for it to be born. It's like, our training, next training session, I'll have to reserve it for another time. So the Oracle Fish brings the staff and says, Oh, uh, someone's been in touch with you all this time. And we say, Oh, I wonder who. Uh, hello, who is this? And then Kakarot, Hey, Whis! It's like, Hey, I'm at Bulma's place. You know, can you pick me up? Like, we can train. Oh, I don't want to invite Vegeta too. We said, like, Oh, um, he's already here with me. Kakarot's like sweating. Ah, uh, what? That's cheating! Cheating. 
Hey, blame your wife. She's forcing you to work, Kakarot. Uh, anyway, they returned to Earth. Judas got his, you know, typical, ah, saw, you know, ah, you know. And Kakarot's like, hey, okay, I've got your food. Let's go. But then Moses is like, oh no, uh, Vegeta's staying here. Kakarot's like, huh? How come? Have you seen, have you not seen Bong? Uh, yeah, her belly's big, right? She's giving birth, you idiot! But what's that gonna do with you? She's giving birth, and it's like, what the heck? It's like, you may not be a bad guy, but as a father, you are terrible. Because Kevin's like, uh, I. I didn't even know Gohan when Gohan and Goten were born. You know, Goten, Kakarot was dead. He had an excuse, even though he decided to remain dead. Yeah, <laughs> if he was told like that Chi Chi was pregnant, maybe he would have not. No, he still would have. Because he wanted to train with the bloody other fighters in the other other world. Or whatever. whatever. In his defense, he was dead when Goten was born. But Gohan. Come on. Piccolo's more of a father to Gohan. Um, Vegeta's like, da fool! If I leave right now to go train, while Bulma's, you know, giving birth any day now, she'll never forgive me. It's understandable. Plus, it goes back to what we uh, said. Vegeta needs to learn to relax. He can't just keep training, training, training. He needs to give his time, his body, you know, a chance to recover, recuperate, and then he can be more stronger, he can go more at it, which is what Kakarot does all this time. He doesn't just train, 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 he like takes it easy, he relax. But Vegeta's just, I can understand it. It's too, too much chip on his shoulder, right? The prince of all saints, of course he has to be the best. Ah, uh, hmm. Anyway. Moises is like, oh, I guess I just too advanced or not accustomed to understanding like these Earth's, you know, customs, whatever, you know. So, uh, yeah, Kakarot, Whis, leave without Vegeta. Vegeta, like, has the face and he's like, I am definitely correct here. Uh, I have to. Or something along those lines, I don't know, because he's staying behind for the birth. Or what Whis told him. Crucial information that Kakarot is not fully aware of. And Kakarot would have also had a lapse of mind, just like a curatorial. Yeah. You know how it is. One is like the creator himself. So initially, uh, Kakarot's like, hey, let's train! No, we have to finish up eating, you know, our food, you know. One needs to take his time with these del delicacies, you know. We says this. Beerus like, ah, I'm going back to sleep. So Beerus is just, nah, I'm happy. He's, he's not training, he's not doing anything. Ah, uh, what's the time now? Hmm, okay. And then Kakarot's like, didn't even start the training. Um, Beerus. Shouldn't we like talk about what um, we promised to Zenos Sama? Like, uh, you know, that uh, universal um, tournament? Just, ah, uh, no, just forget about that thing. We don't even really worry about that thing, right? Kakarot insisted, but you know, we, we made a promise. And he, he's, you know, he's harmless. He's good, you know, that's it. He's a freaking kid, but he's got like <clears throat> the god of everything, apparently. That it's like, it's like, mm. <sighs> he may be pure, he is pure, but that's what makes him so dangerous. Kakarot's got the button. This side takes me to him, this side brings him to me. So he pushed that button, right, in the Tsumasu arc, where that future Zeno came to him. This instant, Beerus like, nah, don't do that, you fool! You never know what's gonna happen! And even Whis warns him, uh, this may not be good, it's unpredictable what may actually occur. So, and, hee <laughs> hee, too late, 
boom, he pushes the button and Bill is freaking out. Ah, what the hell? And yeah, that's it. Epic foreshadowing. Of course, if you're up to date with the anime, Cat God's gonna instigate every single universe in the multiverse, except the ones that have been exempt for four universes, are in danger of losing their entire uh, existence. In the anime, two universes have already been wiped out universe 9 and 10, respectively. And Gohan was inadvertently responsible for taking out Universe 10. He fought against his Odin, and it was a noble battle. Odin even, like, um, I think Odin, yeah, his name was, praised Gohan. You are a worthy fighter, right? Knocked him out. Come out, me heart! Yay, Gohan won for Universe 7! Lock it, dropped on the floor. Gohan looks. And the guy had a family, the man had a family. I said, God, this reminds me of like my family, right? Wife and baby. Videl and Pat. And go on shaken by this. But God, I just wiped this. I'm, I'm responsible for wiping this whole universe out. And Piccolo said, Go on. Come on, we need to go. And they shook Gohan back into the action. Yeah, no. Gohan has too many morals. You see, Gohan is more a Superman type character than Kakrod himself, even though Kakrod had the origins more of Superman. Even Dragon Ball Minus retconned this. They were just bad up to be like more of caring and you know his wife Gine had influence on him. In fact, Saiyans were not typical like Saiyan. They're not humans. They don't get married, they don't fall in love. They breed for the sake of keeping their race to survive. The only apparent, like, um, exceptions, King Vegeta and possibly his wife, Queen Vegeta, you know, whatever, right? Bardock and Gine. Or Gine. So they sent Kakra to Earth, not to conquer, but to to get him out of there because they knew Frieza was going to destroy them all in a month's time. So that's besides the point. Gohan has more morals. More Superman type character. This is gonna... This is gonna ruin him unless he finds a way to rise above it all. He's not that type of character. But as Kakarot He's fighting, yeah, I want to fight strong fighters. I'm going to be number one. I'm going to be the strongest in the whole universe. I'm going to survive until the end. But Vegeta, he went to the time chamber. There were like a couple of hours before the actual tournament had begun. Dra was born. Vegeta was like entered in. And Pop was like, ah, uh, do not destroy the chamber this time because you will be banned. Team four star purple style. Gia enters his life. No, this time. The one who survived and win this tournament and outdo Kakarot is me! In the actual tournament itself, Kakarot went so far, so desperate to even get Freeza, recruited Freeza of all people. Oh my god. At the tournament, Universe 9 was wiped out, and Vegeta he had no choice but to help Kakarot. Kakarot was like on the um, defensive. And Vegeta knocked some fighters off the ring. Man, even the cat lady. And the cat lady is like, um, what is it? Come on, stand still, stand still so I can like scratch off your handsome face. It's all been Kakarot. Kakarot's got the burn here and there. Even they brought back Super Saiyan God out of nowhere. Oh, and he goes between red and blue. And you know what happened in the manga? Kakarot used Super Saiyan God on hit first. There was no Kaioken. There's no Kaioken. 
It doesn't make logical sense as well. Oh, it's a technique of the God. And this is a God. I have God key. Ah, oh, it's more sustainable. No, it isn't. Super Saiyan Blue has severe stamina draining issues. You top Kaioken on top of it, what's gonna happen? Freaking got to a point that Kakarot didn't even know if he could fight anymore. He was that fucked up after the tournament against it. In the anime, in the manga, he went Super Saiyan God. And then he went Super Saiyan Blue, but not back and forth. When Vegeta quashed Black, he went from Super Saiyan God to reserve his stamina. That's a training he did inside the hyperbolic time chamber. Manga exclusive. And switch to blue at the moment of impact. So the attack will be that much more powerful. The speed. Everything. Stationary. Vegeta remained as rep. <clears throat> Super Saiyan God. So. Kakarot has done this now in the anime. Vegeta has to do it as well. It's happened in the manga, it's foreshadowing! But who? Who is he gonna do it against? <clears throat> Hit? Or someone even great, like Topo? Ah, we'll see. Hint, Toshio on Twitter has hinted two things because people would have asked him. Rematch with Hit? Gonna be a glorious, spectacular battle where Vegeta either will incapacitate Hit or knock him out of the ring. Or, and uh, 